Hello, Dawn Moore at Allegiance Title Company. The last few videos that I have done have discussed the addendum for property subject to mandatory membership in a property owners association and the rules regarding the subdivision information being required under that addendum. I have given you my suggestions on how this should be handled to protect both the buyer and the seller. But now I just want to give you some information that seem to be aha moments when I teach about this addendum in classes. First of all, the CCNRs, the Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions, are required by law to be posted on the website of the Property Owners Association or their management company. So a buyer does not have to wait to receive them under the contract provisions and only have three days to review these documents before being able to terminate the contract. I encourage the buyer, since these can be voluminous, to get them off the website and start reading them even before they've executed the contract. And I want you to encourage your buyers to read them. You've heard me say this before. The covenants, conditions, and restrictions limit the buyer's use. It is the buyer's responsibility to review them and make sure he can use the property as he chooses to. Look on the website, get them early, start reviewing them soon. The second tip or information that I want to give you is you do not have to have a contract on your property to be able to order this subdivision information from the Homeowners Association. I told you that my suggestion is that the seller order it during the listing period and give it to every buyer that comes along so that when you use the addendum you can check item 3 which allows the buyer to order an update if they choose to but only gives the buyer an out under the contract if there's a material change in the subdivision information. Any other choice under that addendum really gives the buyer a free walk once they get the homeowners association, meaning they can walk for any reason, even unrelated to the homeowners association. So again, I suggest that the seller order it during the listing period, and there is no requirement that you have a contract before you order it. The law does not require that. However, the provision that does mention a contract in the law about getting subdivision information from the homeowners association is only when the buyer orders the homeowner's information. And you know the buyers can order that because that's choice A2 under the addendum. And that's under the statute that says, for a request from a purchaser of the property, the property owner's association may require the purchaser to provide evidence that the purchaser has a contractual or other right to acquire the property. That's the only statement in this law that requires a contract for someone to order. Otherwise, a seller can order at any time. Thirdly, I want you to remember that this subdivision information is only as to the condition of the homeowners association. It's not a certification or a statement of a binding obligation to a buyer. So even though the homeowners association oftentimes put the buyer's name in this subdivision information before they deliver, it's not a certification to this particular buyer. It's simply a statement of the condition of the homeowners association at the time this information is delivered. So if you've ordered one under a previous contract and that contract falls through, don't suggest that the seller order a whole new set of subdivision information. Just use that current subdivision information, give that to the second buyer, and check A3 under the addendum, which only allows the buyer to get out of the contract if there's a material adverse change in that information from the date they receive it before they execute the contract to the date of closing. I hope these tips will be of help to you to help you understand the subdivision law and the requirement for the Homeowners Association to provide you certain information. Allegiance is your resource for results. Thank you.